Think of two words that can change your life forever. If you exercise them daily. Hi, I'm Jimi Hendrix. And this episode is called Two Words That Can Change Your Life Forever. On Empower Your Pattern 2.0. Did you know that there are... I'm James Hendrix. Founders of James Hendrix Empowerment. I believe that there are patterns to help you receive more, to help you live a better and extraordinary life. I am a success, confidence, and thrive coach, a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And if you come with me, I will help you discover these patterns. Let's go. Okay. Being inspired by a good friend of mine to talk about something that is omitted in our society. You know, without no thanks to our reactive culture, through entertainment, news, and social media, it's always how terrible things are. When I want to talk to you about a concept that I learned from a peak performance expert that I admire, his name is Dr. Della Toro McNeil. This one thing he said on a TV interview before giving a keynote speech to a Toastmasters audience in Vancouver, Canada. He said this, I spell energy, I-N-N-E-R dash G, because the G stands for gratitude. Let me tell you something, that really had an effect on me. We have so much to be grateful for. Like, I think I can list at least 21 things I can be grateful for. I'm grateful for a roof on my, over my head. I'm grateful for uh, plumbing and running water. I'm grateful that the sun is shining. I'm grateful that I'm, I'm breathing. I'm thankful that Jesus Christ atoned and died for my sins and made it possible for me to return back to Him and Heavenly Father. I'm grateful for good friends like, like Bishop Dave and his wife Emily, uh, Marie, so, so many wonderful people out there. You need gratitude because if you don't have gratitude, how can you help to succeed? It's like what the success coach uh, Terry Seville Foy, she, she's a Christian success coach. She, she does a sentence she says often in some of her videos. If you complain, you remain. Now, I have, a, I have a confession to make. During nearly two years of COVID, I would sit there sometimes for hours just feeling sorry for myself. And then I don't know what it's like. It's like March 30th. The light bulb went on. I was like, Jimmy, you're getting everything back almost like it should be. Stop complaining. Quit this pity party. You have so much to be grateful for. And not long afterwards, I um, watched a YouTube video of Brendan Machard about how to overcome a bad day. And he mentions stuff like uh, listening to some good music, um, uh, meditation. But the, these three things he has people do, I appreciate. He says write three things that you're grateful for. Of course, I always do my best to write more. Always do my best to write more, depending on how many days there are in the month. I challenge myself. When I'm having a bad day to do that. At first it's labored, but then it becomes obvious. C can do the gratitude thing, you know? There's too much negativity out there. And then he says three things, about three things, three things that you, you can accomplish. And then write down your reward. But the most important part of that is gratitude. I think... I think Dr. Stephen Covey is one of those that believes that you start with gratitude every day. 
God rest his soul. He was he was one of my favorite thought leaders that I looked to, especially when I was I was engaged to an ex wife and we purchased his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Now I was getting into it big time, but back then I don't know was it Mike Mike's wife just seemed kinda of lost on the meaning of it. But I was enjoying it. You need gratitude. Without gratitude, you don't have no significance. You don't have no success. You don't have no future. And with no significance, no success, no future, if you want it, no. No wealth. I'm going to say something. I'm going to be bold here. I'm like a bold statement here. And that is, there is no wealth where there is no gratitude. If, if you're just sitting there and sapping and complaining when you got a roof over your head and plumbing and running water and people that care about you, you got problems. You got serious problems. You're reactive, and this podcast is not for you. But if you're willing to... If you're willing to be grateful for the things that you do have and go out and crush it to receive more and live a better and extraordinary life right now, you need to have you need to have gratitude, okay? You need to have gratitude. Let me tell you something right now. I'm going to start to preach a little bit here. It's a verse in Romans. Let me see if I can find my Bible here. <laughs> Yeah, you didn't think I was going to go there. You didn't think I was going to go there. Well, I'm going there. I know some people may complain, but, well, well, Jimmy, you preach so much in your podcast. My faith is a part of everything that I do. Okay? Now, if you bear with me, we're going to go to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. <laughs> Lovely giant print King James Bible I received from sister missionaries in our church. It's been about six years now. Okay, let's go to Romans. Going to Romans. Because uh, I'll tell you something. Even before it came to full fruition, the Apostle Paul describes our reactive culture. Even the pen before it grew to full fruition, Paul waxes prophetic. He said, Well, Jimmy, you don't know. Yes, I do know that. <laughs> If you're sitting in this, uh, the Bible as much as I am, this is important. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm a Latter-day Saint. I think some Latter-day Saints need to be a little bit more of, um, need to be more scholars in the Bible. I mean, I love the Book of Mormon, don't get me wrong. I believe it's true. But we need, we need the Bible. Verse 21. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful. But became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish heart was darkened. Now, in the final few minutes, I want to talk to you about to those of you who are depressed or down. Okay, I get it. You're coasting on, you're doing good. Get, you get knocked down in the hole. It's dark in there. It's hard. Others can help you. Others can help you out. But they can only take you so far. Because I'm going to give you the biggest, baddest weapon of them all that can help you overcome depression-based uh, 
depression-based adversity. Well, something I discovered when I was in the hospital listening to Steve Harvey recovering from both a broken leg and pneumonia. He inspired me that you need gratitude. That you need to put it together because it's only through gratitude and praising God for what he has for you that you get back on your feet. Every day that we wake up, we should be grateful. Okay? I've been doing a lot better in the past episodes about, about uh, psychology. How about a little bit, uh, instead, a little bit more practical, almost like theological deals here? I can indirectly quote the theologian um, Gordon B. Hinckley. He says, he says, there's nothing worse that offends God that if a man does not confess his hand in all things, is not thankful. You know, that's one thing Mama taught me in the early age. At Christmas time, Thanksgiving. What do you say, James? And I'm not a little voice, I always say, thank you. And I used to think that it's just, it's just good manners. No. In a way, life and death depend upon gratitude. Now, I hope you enjoy listening to the How You Pattern 2.0. If you like what you hear, please subscribe. Become a part of Pattern Realm. Share this with Mama Zon, Papa Zon, everyone. Don't just sit there and take it. Build your dreams, you can take it. Do what others don't, you can be what others won't. Do what others won't, you can have what others can't. Choose, act, and pursue happiness. God bless you.